Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. When you hear CQRS, do you immediately think of two databases, Kafka and an event pipeline? That's exactly what Netflix did with their website, ta but they eventually replaced it with an in-memory database called Raw Hollow. So let's go through what they changed, why they changed it, and the thoughts around that, because there's some big misconceptions about CQRS and their overall architecture that I want to highlight. So let me start by explaining what they were doing, what their architecture was, and why it was a problem, because it's one specific use case which plays a part of this. So let's start in the very bottom left of this diagram. This is where your Netflix editors are using the CMS tool to write articles, reviews, or whatever they're doing there, and they're interacting with a write database. If you think about WordPress, for example, sure, it has its own database. That's exactly what this is. So then what they do is when they publish an article, that's a webhook that's hitting this to dumb ingestion service. Now, what you can think of this as, if you're familiar with projections, that's really what's happening here, is that you're taking that write data, the shape of it, and turning it into something more meaningful for read purposes. You're optimizing it for reads. So you can see it says convert page to independent sections and then publish one by one. So they're publishing that kind of output to a, uh, a topic in Kafka, and then you have the page data service above that that's reading that topic from Kafka and then caching it as well as putting in a Cassandra database. So now you as the end user that's going to the Tadum website, really what you're doing is you're hitting that page construction service, which is taking all those read optimized parts that are in cache or in Cassandra, and it's can basically pulling them all together, doing some type of composition there, and then outputting that to you. So you're getting the read optimized version of everything that was written. So it makes sense. We kind of have a read optimized side and a write optimized side. Now, before I get to the two key aspects of their architecture that I really need to discuss, I want to thank Current for sponsoring this video. Current's an event data, data platform that feeds real-time business critical data with historical context in fine-grained streams from origination to destination, enhancing data analytics and AI outcomes. For more on Current, check out the link in the description. Now, there's two things that I really need to point out because they're very important in this. The first is their use case of why this architecture didn't really work was because of previewing changes by the Netflix editors and the length of time that could take because they were going through the full life cycle, the full path of making a change, it having going to that data ingestion service, which then basically converting that into something read optimized, which then that content got published to a Kafka topic, you see in the flow. That took a while for that to actually happen, way too long than the, what they actually wanted. The second point is that this is a little bit unusual because really what they're doing is that transformation, the read optimized part, typically what you would see is an event being published to a broker, to an event log, whatever the case may be, and that's what asynchronously would trigger the projection to do the read, uh, the write optimization, to convert it from something that's write optimized to something that's read optimized. They were not doing that. They were using Kafka as a means to kind of distribute that data up to the read side so it could then put that in Cassandra in their cache. So let me go through what's typical and then also what the big mix conception here is all along. Now this is typically more what you'd see where you have the client, they're interacting with the CMS, the publish an article, that's the command that actually goes to the right database. Okay, we're at the same thing. This is where it differs. It's typically what you'd see is an event being published that you have to some broker, some topic, and then asynchronously, completely asynchronous, it, like their example is still a webhook. The difference at this point, your projection would be converting that data from the right to something read optimized and immediately updating the read database. This is where this differs, is at this point, that you're using Kafka as kind of a distribution mechanism to then push that up to the read side rather than just writing to it right away. I'm not exactly sure why. Then you'd have a client hit the Tadum website, same thing, and then you're reading that read optimized way. The issue with doing this example, as I kind of go through it a little bit quicker, is that if you have a request, you made your command, there's some projection that needs to do that, you could have a query by yourself trying to read your own write essentially, and it's not there yet. And that's typically where this is a problem. And when people talk about eventual consistency being an issue, is you're trying to read your own what write, and in their case, they're still had that same issue, and it took a long time for that to happen. Now, the big misconception that's implied here, two things. One is that CQRS has to have two different databases. Not the case at all. It's really just about having two different paths for reads and writes, which then allows you possibly to have something read optimized. 
The second of this is that there's investual consistency involved and there doesn't need to be at all. So we can go from this to this. It's still the exact same thing where we have a client calling a command, that particular path, and it could be writing to our database, something that's right optimized. Then we could have a projection immediately called that says it's writing and doing that transformation and updating kind of our read model, something that's read optimized. Then on our client's side for our query, it's just reading that read optimized way. It doesn't even need to be this. Our query could be using that write portion. It does not need to be two different databases. It doesn't even need to be read optimized. It's just having two clear paths that allow you to do this. You do not need two databases. You do not need Kafka. You do not need eventual consistency. Those are implementation choices. And you don't even need anything read optimized. But if you did, you do not need eventual consistency. As a simple example here, I have my command side where I'm actually writing my state there. Then I'm immediately updating my projection, my read model, my read side at the same time within the same transaction. And four people jump into the comments saying, single responsibility, blah, blah. Okay, the point of this exercise to illustrate they can be done together. You can be using tooling to publish an in-memory event that's handled separately where the tool will use the exact same database, the exact same transaction, so you're fully consistent between your command side and separately, still in memory, in process, writing your projection and on the read side. You do not need eventual consistency. It's an architectural choice and there's trade-offs. Imagine that. In the case of Netflix, they had the issue of essentially reading their own rights and the length of time with eventual consistency that was causing their issue. So when they wanted to preview changes, it was just taking too long. So this is their new architecture. And spoiler alert, they could still have eventual consistency or consistency at all. I'll get into that. So we have our Netflix editor, the CMS, this is all the same. We're writing to our write database and then we publish that webhook. And this is where it changes. It's now that we have raw hollow, which is an in-memory database in the Tadum ingestion service. So we read optimize, we kind of do that construction of what we actually want for our read state and we're storing it in memory. Then that's replicated to other nodes. And in this case, the page construction service is another node. So by default, they say that it's eventually consistent, that replication, but they do have strong read after write consistency if you need it, which is really, really cool. So all this is much faster, but there's still, even if you're doing consistent read after writes, you still have that eventual consistency because you have two phases here. You're writing to the CMS database, then you have to invoke the webhook, what has to do that translation, and then has to save that to and, and possibly replicate. So there's still a, a circumstance, it's just much shorter likely now, that you write to your database and immediately like to the write database of the CMS and you don't see that on tadum.com. And they say that it's just much faster now. So it's still very cool, this raw hollow, but you still have eventual consistency here. And what about consistency at all? What happens if you write to your write database, the CMS database, but don't publish the webhook? Now we're getting into outbox territory. So they went from CQRS to CQRS, from two databases to two databases. The implementation changed, that's it. There's no mandate on what infrastructure you need, that you need two databases, that you have to have something read optimized, that you need to be using eventual consistency or some type of message broker or event log. None of that's required. It's having two different paths for reads and writes. So the next time you hear that CQRS needs this or that, you know that's not the case. It's not about infrastructure. It's all about responsibilities. Now for the good part, get in the comments and let me know, how are you using CQRS? Are you using multiple different databases? Are you read optimized? Are you leveraging event-driven architecture to do so? Get in the comments and let me know how you're doing it. Thanks everybody that supports my channel. If you wanna support my channel, you can join it. Links in the description on how to join. Again, I really do appreciate everybody that supports it. Thank you very much. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.